Hi, we're Thomas and Milena from Gold, and this is InfoGreet's DistroPix. My first pick is Individual Thought Patterns by Dev. This is probably the album that got me into extreme music. Uh, I remember very well, it was 1993, I had just been to, uh, to see Metallica, Megadeth and Suicidal Tendencies perform in my hometown of Rotterdam. And just a few days or weeks later I, saw, uh, I passed this kiosk and they sold Artspock, the, the big Dutch metal zine and it had uh, Metallica and Megadeth on the cover, so I was totally grasped by it because my favorite bands were on the cover. And in that issue, there was a, an interview with Death, and I think also a review of this album. I thought, yeah, that sounds so heavy and extreme and dark, and that's something that I got, got to try, and I tried, and I loved it. And uh, probably still my favorite Death album, which probably is like a controversial thing because a lot of people prefer Symbolic or the older stuff. Um, I love all of that as well, but uh, for me the songwriting and the, the technicalities of, of individual thought patterns and also the lyrical topics, yeah, all of that just makes it still one of the best death metal albums ever. Do you still listen to it? I still listen to it every now and then, although I try to listen more to new music than to stuff that I already know, but yeah, it's one of those albums that I keep going back to every now and then. Midwife. I totally uh, love this album. I, lo I love, I, I mean, we've, we've seen her play live at Roper. That show was amazing. I believe it was on a Saturday morning. Is that yeah. right? It was probably the first set of the, the we day. We were, I mean, I'm never hungover, but I, mm -hmm. I was a bit still not really that awake. And it was a perfect way to start the day because it's just these, I, I feel like it's really like meditative in a way. And not in a boring way, but in a more like a, there's a little bit of sun and you're lying in the grass and you're just walking, the, you're just seeing the clouds pass by. And to me, this album is just really ridiculously beautiful. And uh, I love it. It's like a beautiful dream. It is. <laughs> One of the best shows I've ever seen was Botch. Uh, I saw them on tour with Dillinger Escape Plan. I don't know, somewhere around the turn of the millennium, I guess. Um, and We Are The Romans is yeah, a phenomenal album. Uh, just been reissued, I believe, by Sergeant House. And they are playing shows again, so <laughs> let's hope that they'll make it to Europe <laughs> as well. Because uh, if they are just like health of as good as that they were when I saw them back then, uh, they are still an amazing, amazing band. And uh, yeah, one of those bands that's been copied many times, but yeah, it's just inimitable. Yeah, Botch are Botch, uh, a, a force on their own, and uh, one that you should definitely check out if you've never heard them. This is probably my, my album of the year, I think. Um, totally in love with this too. Well, I like Boy Harsha anyway. So um, this album is, uh, to me, I think what, what I like about it is that it is, with, with their former work, it was more like me dancing in the living room or vacuum cleaning <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> but this is more like an atmospheric kind of album and I love that. And, um, I thought it was really interesting that they did this because I think it is, I, I, I can imagine it's pretty complicated to just like keep making music um, 
in like a dance kind of vibe because I feel like this is more, for them, probably more experimental, which I thought was really nice. And I love that they made the movie with it. So we saw it, I think, what was it? May, June, something like that. And I really loved that the whole atmosphere that is in this amazing album is also in that movie. So listen to it, buy it. <laughs> Something new, Zulu. Yeah, I love black power, I love power violence, so black power <laughs> violence can't really go wrong. Yeah, it's, it's one of those new bands that are really refreshing, that, that, that do hardcore uh, in a way that fits the tradition, but um, it's also very, very now and contemporary. Uh, we actually played with them at Roskilde Festival. They, uh, we, they were on after us and um, yeah, it was so they energetic. They ripped it up. Yeah, it, was <laughs> it was completely, yeah. Circle pits, everything that you want from a hardcore show. And uh, yeah, they seem to be lovely people as well. So yeah, good music is still being made. <laughs> You wanna? You have so many. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh, this is this is one also f from this year. It's Solar Jesus new record, um, and just uh, for the opening song alone, it's just amazing. It's uh, probably one of the best songs of the year. I think uh, so too. You should listen to it and then just maybe on a headphone or something because the production is fucking ridiculous. Yeah. It's really great. The yeah. songwriting, the production, the, the delivery. Fir the, the first song. What what's it called? Lost. Lost. It's yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a good song to get lost in, I guess. <laughs> Just play it on repeat and uh, yeah, so let Jesus. From one woman to another? Yeah. Uh, so this was new music, this is old music, this is already 10 years old, oh, I mean almost. This is from 2013, we're old. <laughs> I remember when I listened to it back then and I still sometimes listen to it now and it's a really amazing album. There's, there's sounds and production wise, there's stuff on here that I would really love to hear again in music and I think that what they did back then was super interesting back then but it's still very interesting right now and I think the energy on this album and the like the atmospheric kind of feel. We went on holidays to Scotland once and it was very like misty and r such a beautiful country like water everywhere just clouds and and yeah how do you say that forest everything and then listening to this album it was, was really amazing. It was a good soundtrack. Yeah. Yeah, I guess for me, for me this is peak Chelsea Wolf. Yeah, right? Yeah. One of her best. Yeah, I love it. American Nightmare. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> kind of a special band to me. Uh, I used to play in this hardcore band called, called Malkovich and we uh, supported uh, American Nightmare or Give Up the Ghost as, as what they were called back then on a few shows and um, yeah it's they, they brought emotion to hardcore um, but by still being a very aggressive fast-paced band um, I think they were they, they really brought hardcore into this millennium uh, and they made such a mark uh, bands like Modern Life is War followed of course in their footsteps and uh, with a bit of a more modern sound one of those bands that uh, I probably even love even more now than I did back then, which is because they were so hyped, uh, but they stood the, the test, test of, of time. time. <laughs> That's how you say it in English. Yeah. Um, and, and the artwork was always fantastic and I love this cover. Bad Brains. What to say about Bad Brains? <laughs> <laughs> they're, yeah, they're so legendary, they're, you know, uh, probably if I could take a travel machine to see one show ever, 
maybe go to bad brains, early 80s, CBGBs, and witness that, uh, that energy, and, but also their mastery of the instruments and their fantastic songwriting. I, I, I saw them later, uh, probably around 2008 or something in Amsterdam. It was good, but <laughs> not CBGB's early 80s. Um, I really had to get used to all the, the reggae stuff. Um, so I think when I first started listening, listening to them, I would skip the reggae stuff and only listen to the hardcore songs. But now I love the blend as well. And um, they, they used to say some shady things about uh, uh, homosexuals, but they apologized for that. They took it back, so, um, which is a good thing. Uh, people can make uh, mistakes and people should change. Um, I think that's one of the best parts of being human, that you can de develop and change. So uh, bad brains are good proof of that. Yeah, awesome band and uh, total classic. Shall we do this one band that we love? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you tell. <laughs> but yeah, I love it too. We gedood, we had you do it, whatever you say. <laughs> we always find it super funny because it's such a Dutch word, but nobody. No. I love when people say it when they're not when they don't they don't have like the the Dutch tongval or how do you yeah. say that? We had you do is so the best pronunciation, I think. In Dutch, you say wie gedood, but yeah. it could be that... We could say it one more time. Yeah. Wie, wie gedood. gedood, but they're Flemish, so they actually might say that... Wie gedood. Yeah, wie gedood, that's probably, probably. like how they say it. Um, this is their, their fourth album, the newest album. There's always blood at the end of the road. I'm not sure if that's true, but <laughs> it's, uh, it's an amazing album. It's, for me, it's like peak contemporary black metal. Um, it's... Like if you're like in, in, in you're inside someone's delusion and, uh, and, and are locked up in there and have to witness it and go through it. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's not for everybody, um, but it's, it's, yeah, it's amazing. It's, uh, uh, and I, I love uh, the visuals that they made with it um, because black metal used to, used to be this genre where video didn't necessarily always work but uh, they mastered it and yeah i think that's uh, a fantastic extra layer to the to the music is that everything that's it <laughs> you thought you had a lot yeah. but <laughs> yeah so these were evil green sister picks <laughs>